Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Dual Screens Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Stephen Fontana. And with me, as always, he's in there, in the other box there, out of Queens, New York. He's Andy S. Mackis. How are you, Andy? I feel good about today, Stephen. You should. I think it's going to be a fun episode. I, I Oh, geez. It's, I'm not used to wearing my hat forward, but we had to right. because don't, of the coinkening be with our guest. Don't hurt yourself. That's right. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest <laughs> is Sean Weech. He is the creator of Holomento, a permadeath. Uh, I can't believe that's a thing. RPG inspired by classics such as Zelda combined with roguelike elements, because why not? Sean, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you guys. Thank you for having me. This Excited is to be here. Yeah, this is going to be an exciting one because your your game kind of left some jaws on the floor when mm. it first showed up on Kickstarter. So I can't wait. I mean, this is something we jumped on right away and we can't wait to hear the, sto- the story about it and what you have planned for it. But for everyone who is new to the Dual Screens podcast, this is the Internet's number one indie developer interview podcast. Probably. The show posts each and every Friday for your listening pleasure on your podcast service of choice, including our home, podbean.com. We're also on Google Play, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, so your sister's ass. We're everywhere. I'm telling you, we're everywhere. And if you want to watch the video version of the podcast, go to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash dual screens TV. And if you're watching right now on that YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button, the thumbs up, leave the comments and all that other fun stuff because we love to see it because when numbers go up, we're our, our smiles go up and Andy's peen goes up and it's all mm. it's a great time. We love mm-hmm. it. And and you know what? If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, leave a review. You know, it's not going to hurt you. Just leave a review. It's really not going to hurt. Anyway, Andy, I'm going to yes. kick it over to you for our ceremonial, Ooh. traditional lead-in question of the show. Take it away. There's a very specific thing on my mind, Sean, as I'm mm-hmm. browsing through the Kickstarter. All right. As we- Brace yourself. There is a tier... That says design an item. Yes. How how raunchy can this get? Because mm. I can spend some money and <laughs> propose to you a very nice looking dick saber. Dick saber. <laughs> now now here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> the the dick saber. Okay. Mm. Is canon now in video games. The dick saber exists. In video games right now. True. Am I going to get a copyright strike? N- <laughs> no, because Andy is <laughs> I creator. own the rights exclusively oh, to the Dick Saber. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. Andy has created a Dick Saber in Panzer Paladin. Um, it is canon. It exists. And it, it, and it does work. It, it, it does absolute work. So, yeah, this is this is a legitimate question. You could be... You could be... <laughs> can't believe I'm about to say this. But you can join the, the annals, or the annals, as it were... Mm. Of the Dick Saber video games, how does that feel? I mean, it's definitely an honor. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would have to think about it because I don't know how the publisher feels about that. That's true. Right. That's I true. Think yeah. should, listen, 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 listen. I think exactly. it's just publishers. <laughs> see see the, the, the design first, and you know, get a sense of it. Yeah. Okay. And if it calls out to you in a certain way, then. No. Uh, it's got stats already included, so there's oh, wow. the, the work's done. The I'm work's done. It's a it's, it's a penetrating it's weapon. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, penetrating weapon. It's almost like a repeater. It's yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. It, it's, it's, a, just, it's a nice weapon. It's just how much balls do you have as a developer? As a developer, and on mm-hmm. your saber, how many how many balls do you have on your saber? Is you that wasn't the question I was expected to be first. No, no, <laughs> and never. It, how about swinging with that one? Absolutely, that's how we roll over here, but. For those who don't know what Holomento is, why don't you give the elevator pitch to our listeners and to our to our fans and to anybody who may may have just strolled in here and has no idea what the hell we're talking about? Sure, sure. Yeah, so I mean, Holomento, like you said, indie permadeath RPG. And it's like, well, what does that mean? And so it, we kind of break it down into like three basic things, right? Uh, exploring, fighting, and rebuilding. And rebuilding is kind of the part that sets Holomento apart from a lot of other, um, like, roguelites like this sure so i mean there's like the exploration part right you go run around the world and find everything there's a bunch of shortcuts very dark souls inspired shortcuts actually i really love dark souls for like world design and things like that Mm. um so there's a lot of that going on and then it's going to have a mix of um like handcrafted and procedurally generated dungeons okay and so essentially you're going to go through and you're going to go through uh, right now we're targeting like three out of a total of eight dungeons each run. So you choose which dungeons you want to do. Beat those dungeons on that run. Get the 
end item from those, and then you can go and finish the run basically. So that's one aspect of it. That's kind of the exploration part. Fighting part, typical in a RPG like this, you got third person combat, um, and it's quite a mix of combat. I mean, you guys have seen some of the gameplay. There's yeah. a mix of revolvers, shotguns, ARs, melee weapons, swords, shooting magic out of your fists, kind of everything there. <laughs> yeah. What, what what was the inspiration behind that? Like, why did why did you guys go so versatile with with the combat? Did you, you know, did you I, just couldn't settle on something, so you just threw it all together? <laughs> I was like, you know what? There's so many different things, and I have all these anime. So a lot of those animations I did not make myself. I found packs for free. Oh, okay. Like, Man, it'd be really cool to throw all this stuff together. And so I just tried it. I'm like, oh, this feels really good to have all this variety. And so some of the some of the playstyle variety there is also inspired by like um, like Binding of Isaac, um, yep. where items affect so much of what you do. Um, like one item, if you get like brimstone, that's a totally different play style than just like rapidly shooting little tears, right? So the the variety of the weapons kind of is inspired from that as well. Wow. Yeah, uh, there's something about fighting a giant rat with a crown on its head with a grenade launcher. Like, <laughs> I, 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 I get that. the swords and the shields <laughs> and like those things, but like the guns just dials it up to a whole other level of yes, please. It just, yeah, it, when it, I started adding the guns, it was great. <laughs> Yeah, it's it, all really good. <laughs> it, it feels like it feels like a every little gamer's dream of getting in there and just being like, yeah, but what if I had a sword, a shield and a Gatling gun? Mm. Exactly. That's the way I approach it. I'm like, what if you could do this? <laughs> I had no like, limits. Oh, I can make that. Yeah, let's do it. And the third part, the world building, you said. Yes, that one is a really big one. So that one's mostly inspired by uh, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild because the Terrytown quest in that game is one of my all-time favorite quests from any game I've ever played. I freaking love that quest of rebuilding and built well, building that town from scratch, not really rebuilding, but I figured, okay, how can we apply this to everything in the game, right? So building shortcuts, building shops, building towns, everything. I want to make it so everything is upgradable because I freaking love upgrades, man. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. It reminds me of um, a, uh, one of our favorites here on the show, Dark Cloud. Where, mm. you know, that whole the whole purpose of that game was getting pieces uh, of the town that was destroyed and building it to the townsfolks mm -hmm. uh, liking. But this seems to have a little bit more freedom where you're kind of building it to your style, like how you want to make things kind of move around and and how you could get around the, the areas. Now, you said it was um, the that some of the shortcuts are Dark Souls inspired is the world building talk to that system like if you're rebuilding the world are you rebuilding those shortcuts are you doing all of that stuff dark soul style or or is it a, mi a mixture of both there's kind of a mixture so yeah there's some that are like one-way shortcuts you open them they stay open forever very much dark souls and then others are like okay you build a bridge from scratch you need to get this much money to support it or you need to finish this quest line to support it things like that so yeah it's a mix of both of those hmm. and yet in all these complex systems you have permadeath in this situation yes. thrown in yes. for some mm. insane reason so and, it's, yeah i should explain that a little bit <laughs> how does that because it's like does all my shit go away if i no. die yeah so it's important to say that so <laughs> permadeath really only affects your items that's it mm. uh so there's okay. there's permanent stats that can be affected so actually the museum system which hasn't really been talked about in the kickstarter at all um there's a museum that you can go and donate things to like relics and when you upgrade and donate things to the museum with the relics you get a little bit like a very slight uh stat boost from that that's permanent okay and that's different than the item stat boosts you get that are short but much more powerful so there's right. kind of permanence there and then the shortcuts are all permanent you open shortcuts they mm -hmm. stay open forever uh, okay. upgrading the towns permanent stays open forever your money stays you don't lose money when you die so the okay. only thing you lose when you die is the items from your run so how do you handle that narratively for like, do, are we creating a character from scratch and yeah. then respawning that character or are we respawning and, and rolling new, a new character? How does that work? So a lot of the story was driven from this idea of gameplay. Um, basically you're a new person each time you restart, you're a new traveler making your journey through the Eventide Hollow. So instead of being the same guy respawning over and over again, you're actually a new person starting a new journey, traveling through. Is the appearance like randomized or are we rebuild are we building that character? How, how does that work? Yeah, so you have a certain amount of start uh, starting classes that you start with. So okay. there's the let's see if I remember them all. Wander, gunslinger, ranger, knight, musashi, and the cleric right now. Those are the starting Good lord. 
Yeah. Seven so, classes. Yeah. So what's interesting with the classes is the only difference between the classes is their starting items. So hmm. uh, like you don't have different stats based on what class you are. It's the stats that you get from those items. Oh, okay. So like the Musashi has a certain okay. outfit and those stats come from that outfit. Right. And you can find those items elsewhere. So you could completely reroll your class basically by picking up mm. items. Like actually on a stream, we had someone playing a cleric and he basically rerolled the entire thing into a gunslinger because he got all the gunslinger items in addition to the <laughs> stuff he had from the cleric. Wow. And it was okay. very broken. I can tell you that. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's a lot of broken builds. <laughs> Balancing needs some work. I'll say that. <laughs> so what's your plan for that? Like, how, how do you like, um, you have some you have some field you have some field in front of you where you're going to be building this thing up so like what, what's number one on your list right now is it is it just getting content complete and then working on balancing or you, do you have a team that's kind of working on everything as you go yeah so how nitty-gritty do you want me to get on this response because <laughs> i can get right down to the weeds i mean this is really people, high level people too. come here to hear how games are made that's okay. why people come here yourself, sean just let Perfect. it all out all right. So right now, I'll tell you, I'm in the save system. The save system has a number of issues, and I'm going through and rewriting the entire thing in C++ because it was written in Blueprints. The game's made in Unreal Engine. Um, okay. And it has a lot of issues. So the current save system is entirely just uh, one slot. And when you save and overwrite, there's a bunch of issues underneath that are like, overwriting the wrong thing there's changing all this so i'm, I'm redoing the safe system completely because when i started the safe system it was basically when i first started making the game and things have changed so much since then it's like it just needs a rewrite right sure so that's kind of my biggest task right now during yeah. the kickstarter is doing that um and it's going to be a an unlimited save slot system so you can keep having unlimited runs it'll, it'll okay, be nice cool. rather than just a single yeah, a single yeah, yeah. save slot where all your data is so you can have unlimited because it really irks me in games where you can't have different progress on different files mm, sure so, yeah, so that's kind of the focus right now. But in terms of the bigger picture, um, we're hoping to go into early access uh, sometime in the fall of this year. That's okay. the goal. Wow. Oh, nice. All right. So, there, yeah, there's a number of things I need to get done for it. Primarily, the dungeon system uh, hasn't even been started. <laughs> so I get to do that. But a lot of the combat and stuff is already there, so it shouldn't be too hard to do that. But it's just a procedural system i got to come up with still. Um but we already have like bosses and things like that. So it shouldn't be a huge amount of work for that. Mm. Uh, getting the upgrades. So there's there are upgrades and stuff like that for the towns, but it's not actually implemented with the current save system. Like I said, I got to redo that. So I've been pushing that off. So getting the upgrades working properly is on the list. Um, and then really just fleshing out the rest of the world, lots of content, things like that. And then bug fixes, of course, mm. those are kind of the four, the four main things before we access. What is the character's main thrust? What's driving them to go to dungeons, fight bosses? What are the stakes in this world? That what are the stakes? In? Okay, yeah. yeah. So basically, um, the entire world was hit by a cataclysmic event that's explained at the beginning of the game. Um, but it has to do with, have you seen the book that's like on your waist? And the, I mm -hmm. don't know if I, I, I don't know how much of that you guys have seen. There's a book basically that's tied to your waist, and it is the Holomento is the book. Mm -hmm. And that's actually uh, built out of the words hollow and memento because it's even tied hollow, and then it's kind of a memento that sticks with each traveler. Does that make sense? Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm so with that, you so far. Yeah, that's where the name comes from. So that thing is both the cause of the curse of the land and what contains it. So mm -hmm. travelers are tied to that Holomento, uh, and when they die, their soul gets connected to it which is why you keep like the money and things like that everything is tied to the book itself but oh, okay. it's also what caused all of the destruction that leads to like the ruin you see with the castle and things like that and all yeah. the towns are destroyed so that's all tied together so what the main driving factor is is you're trying to rebuild this world using the tool that destroyed it basically and so you got to go through and there's i haven't explained this yet so it's kind of under wraps it's actually going to be a kickstarter update so oh, uh -oh. I, I'll, I'll give a little teaser of it. Okay. Uh, well, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. When when is this episode going up, Andy? This is gonna go up. We say we have this Friday. We have next Fridays. Don yeah. already already. Go. So this is gonna be two weeks. Okay. This this. Hold on, hold on. Let's get you a date. The ninth. Okay. The ninth. <laughs> Does that make That's sense? 
the 9th of April. So <laughs> if you're going to be <laughs> talking about it, you could talk about it. It probably be out by then, I would say. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I, would, I would hope. I'll, I'll give a pretty decent teaser of it. How's that? Here we go. To here we go. It, Tease the hell out of us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so there's basically um, these stones that are tied to each of the dungeons. And they you, you need to collect a certain amount of them, like I said, in order to get through to the end. And so those also tie into how the book works with the cataclysmic event and the curse and all this stuff. So all of that ties together. So the reason you're going to these dungeons is you're getting these stones to help defeat the curse. And I won't mm. say more than that. Okay. And then you fight all your previous selves in a massive battle royale. In a massive battle royale. <laughs> you know, you you're actually not super far off. <laughs> and I'm not going to say uh-huh. that. <laughs> oh, it becomes a muso game where you're just fighting ten thousand of your fallen. <laughs> We've gone from Breath Maybe of the Wild 10, to Hyrule yeah. Warriors. That's, That's right. happening. It didn't say which Zelda inspired yeah. game. Yeah. <laughs> it could be any of them. It's just Hyrule Warriors. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, so so you're on Kickstarter. I, I don't. I think it's just a few days now, right? You're on, you're up there, maybe. Yeah, we're on what is this day five? We we launched on the seventeenth, so yeah. So one, two, three, four, five, yeah. Five you're going to be well into the middle of this by the time our listeners hear hear this. So why don't we cool. tell tell everybody what that's what that experience has been like? What why did you go to Kickstarter? Um, and what has the experience been like so far? Well, Kickstarter has gone a lot better than I expected. Honestly, our first five days have been phenomenal. We've gotten so much support for us relatively unknown game really i mean there's a couple of ads up for it right now that the publisher is running and then other than that they had a couple streamer contacts and then it's just our discord and our twitter and our reddit have gone crazy and spread the word like mad so it's that's awesome. awesome yeah yeah so our community has been absolutely fantastic and huge shout out to them especially our discord our discord is awesome and very active um, what's that like for you this is like your first game development experience like you you have a software background hp yeah. i read up on you yeah. this is like <laughs> your first of you know attempt at making a video game and you're getting a huge response from it what's that like yeah i mean this is the first time i've really tried start to finish to create a product and sell it right before i've done i've done hobbyist game development before this like mm-hmm. just trying things out i'm like oh it would be really cool to try this and that but never never on the scale of this and never on trying to actually finish something and go all the way through with it. So yeah, it's been tremendous. The response has been amazing and I'm kind of blown away. So with with that, with that little experience, how did you get a publisher on board with you? Like, you know, sometimes publishers are a little apprehensive about situations like that. Have you seen the game, Steven? I don't listen. It sells itself. What am I? You and I, you and I both know (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that there are certain vertical slices that could be shown that mm. have been shown to us by mm. the biggest of developers that mm. have fallen flat on their face. So like it's all smoke and mirrors, all smoke and mirrors <laughs> is right. Built on a house of cards. So ha- so how did that that relationship come come about? Sure. Yeah. So one of the first things I did when I started like seriously developing was get on Twitter and Reddit and Discord. Right. So Twitter is actually where the publisher found me, and I think at the time I was like really really small, like maybe. 100 followers or something. It was like the first couple of months and it's brand new. And I had this tweet and it, I don't even think this is in the game anymore. I think I took it out, although it might be buried somewhere. But <laughs> I did this like um, stress test basically with this huge amount of spiders, like just tons of spider enemies, like 200 spider enemies just running around like crazy. And they had like these gross procedurally generated limbs. And it was it was gnarly. And I love it. I guess the publisher saw that and they're like, what the heck? This is so cool. And then they started scrolling through everything else and they're like, oh, we went on board. They pretty much bought in as soon as I started gaining a following. So, wow, okay. <laughs> yeah, but we didn't sign with them until, gosh, November of 2020. And this was when they saw that, I think it was either February or March. So okay. there have been ongoing conversations back and forth. They were like, okay, here's what we're thinking, things like that. A lot of behind the scenes for about five or six months before we finally signed saying, okay. We want to go with deck 13, but yeah, uh, we got approached by a couple other publishers, but, um, deck 13, someone we still, uh, selected cause they were with us basically from the beginning. So they were really on board, mm-hmm. but they bought in a lot. And, uh, our pro our product manager from that team, Dennis, uh, he's a big streamer in Germany 
And he's been helping out with a lot of things like that. A product manager normally wouldn't. He's been helping out with 3D models and animation and stuff. Oh, wow. Totally don't expect from a publisher. <laughs> yeah. So they're like super bought into it. Wow. Like they they're like, they're the like all in. Yeah. They're all in. They love it. So it's been tremendous. I'm really, really happy to be working with them. No. Outside of the publisher coming in and making 3D models, uh, what's what's the team look like for, for on your end? <laughs> yeah. Is it just so, you or do I you mean, have a handful Pretty much of everything is me. Besides oh, music and sound. So okay. I have yeah. um, Adlib Piano, uh, Adil is his name. He's doing all the music in the game and he does absolutely phenomenal work, like insane. I don't know how much of the music you guys have heard. We do have a playlist on the Kickstarter, but that's, gosh, I think it's only like eight of the 70 songs he's made already. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and oh, okay. he is insane. Like this guy can put out a song in like two days and it's like flawless. You're like, <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. How are you doing this? <laughs> I mean, the guy is nuts. And he actually, we just finished up one of the, it, it's going to be the final boss music. So we're not going to share that one. But we did live recorded guitar, drums, and bass for that. And it's like heavy metal. Really, really good. Like really mm. good. And we're super excited for that one. And they just spent like a week mixing that. That's the longest I've ever seen them spin on the track. <laughs> it was like a week. <laughs> so what's going on, man? What's that going guy on? Is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. And I heard it and it's like super good. So yeah, he's he's the uh, musician, composer, everything. Um, and then the sound designer, uh, Wilfried, he's been doing a lot of work. Uh, he has access to the source code and everything. He's digging in there, putting all the sounds in. Um making some of the sounds himself. He actually owns, well, not owns, maybe owns. I can't remember. <laughs> He's part of a company that uh, makes like sound follies and stuff like that. Sure. So they actually go out and record a lot for, uh, one of the ones he sent me was they were recording for supercars for other games and stuff like that. Okay. Like really cool stuff, like recording like Lamborghinis and Ferraris and things like that. That's which dope. Is pretty neat. Yeah. So he's our sound designer. He's worked on a couple other, he's worked on a couple AAA titles. I don't think he wants me talking about those. <laughs> and he's right. worked on another. He can uh, talk to us about those at a yeah. future date. Yeah, 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 yeah. he can come he's up. Awesome. <laughs> and he's worked on a couple of uh, other indie titles as well. So mm. he's great. So yeah, that's kind of the three core team there. And then we just picked up a concept artist who is now also doing 3D design for us because he has experience <laughs> in Blender. So it's like, we just get these people and they just go so above and beyond. They get like multiple roles. <laughs> that's awesome. They yeah. can they can smell the dollars, Sean. Yeah, it's like exactly. they said, this is a gateway to my future yachts. I can see it. <laughs> yeah, the writing's on the wall. <laughs> if you know, and and this is this is the question with every Kickstarter, right? It's like if your vision can actually be met, you 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 do have something special there. Like you you have um something that can can go toe to toe with the big boys, but also has enough indie charm and enough um freshness I, I guess would be the word to really make it stand on its own as opposed to being the the oh it's another one of xyz it's another roguelike it's another zelda like it's another you know it, okay well sure you're always going to have those comparisons and who doesn't want to be in those conversations with you know being compared to breath of the wild or whatever um right. but you you have some systems there that are really unique that could really set this thing apart um was that something that was your purpose? Like, did you, did you say, you know, cause you, you know, you grew up and, and played Zelda and you loved this breath of the wild mission and you wanted to make something that was more expansive on that. Was that always your goal to go out there and, and make something that was um, derivative of, of those? Or did it just kind of happen accidentally with just because those are the games you played? Yeah, so do you want to know the full background and where the game actually started? From? Absolutely. It's kind of funny. Uh, it's what we're here yeah, for. Yeah, that's why exactly. we're here. Okay. <laughs> so originally, I had been using, let's see, Unreal Engine for about two years before I officially started the project. And I was doing a uh, kind of just like an environment thing where I wanted to create an environment based off of a picture I found. Um, it was this concept art that was really cool. And it's actually one of the shots you'll see. I think it's in the trailer where you're kind of looking out from this cave over these ruins and the castles in the background and all this stuff. And originally that was just an environment that I recreated from a random, and I don't even remember, I don't think it actually turned into anything that original concept art, but it was just a random concept art I had found. And that's where it all started. I just wanted to recreate this environment in Unreal based off of this single picture. 
So the game actually started as just an environment. And then mm. I threw a character in there. I started playing around with it. I'm like, okay, this is a neat little place. Maybe I'll expand on this. So I, I kind of built that out. I expanded that. And I'm like, okay, what if I throw some weapons on here and have them start doing some stuff? And I was like, okay. So it was really a evolution of parts of the game. And it wasn't until about, gosh, two or three months into just playing around with mechanics that I started to formulate, okay, here's kind of what I want to do. I want it to be a roguelite. I want it to be a permadeath. I like these systems and I really like these games. How can I kind of pull my favorite things from these games and these systems and make something unique? Mm -hmm. So that's how, kind of how it evolved over a couple months. But yeah, originally it was just making an environment off of some concept art. So <laughs> it's funny how things start. <laughs> yeah. One of the things that I really liked about Breath of the Wild was the freedom you get with the game's various items and systems. Like, it wasn't about clear character progression. It was just here's some tools, and the world's like a giant playground for you. Mm -hmm. Is that what we're looking at with uh, with this game, or is it more of a traditional character progression with stats or abilities as they progress throughout? Right. So you do have the stats and abilities for sure. Mm -hmm. So it is a little bit more. Um rigid than breath of the wild in that mm -hmm. regard um and it doesn't have the same exact open worldness that breath of the wild does where you can climb everything and go everywhere because i do take the dark souls inspired mm. approach with the world design where things you you loop back on places kind of metroidvania style open shortcuts right, right. open things up so that wouldn't really lend itself very well to that breath of the wild exploration right mm -hmm. right so the world design definitely is more influenced by that i would say so you can't sling slot yourself to like the last boss within the first 10 minutes of the game. Well, I won't say that yet. <laughs> I've seen some pretty goofy things you can do. Uh, I recently added this dash ability. If you mm -hmm. get this certain item and there's actually five of them, one for each element. And if you okay. stack all four of them, you can break through several walls by pressing all of the buttons at the same time because it's additive. <laughs> Oh, good lord. <laughs> and you can totally <laughs> clip through items if you have all the dash abilities and press them at the same time. Oh, this is going to make for some fun YouTube content at some oh, point. There, there's already some Twitch <laughs> clips out there. They're great. <laughs> I have seen some really goofy stuff already that I'm like, do I want to patch that? Because that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> what has surprised you the most watching people stream the game that's Alpha State? Like, oh, I know that was possible in my game. Yeah, there's a couple of bugs that are like really irritating i see that are recurring like not fun bugs and i'm like oh gosh there it is on stream again <laughs> and i'm like i knew that was there and i tried to fix it in time but i didn't have enough time i'm like oh gosh <laughs> and then there's other ones where i'm just like what the hell did you just do like I've seen someone slingshot pretty much across half the map like mm -hmm. clipping into a very specific rock and doing this certain ability i'm like who would have i don't even understand and i'm like only a handful of streamers have this and how are they finding this stuff already it's crazy it's, so, that's that's commitment yeah. That's, you, you know, you know, there's a foundation for a good game when someone can break it because they're playing it that much, mm -hmm. and you know that you have something really good there to build off. Yeah, of, so. I mean, we have I think 150-ish alpha testers right now, and there's probably about 20 that play it quite consistently, and they're always bringing me new bugs and stuff. And I'm like, I go and look at some because I have some of them added on. Steam, I look at the profile; it's like 30 hours already, and I'm like. This game's an elf and you've already played 30 hours. I must be doing something, right? <laughs> it's like your own QA testing. It's like, yeah, here, it's like, great. send me the list at the end of the week when you're done. I'll, I'll go through all the shit at some yep. point. Yeah. You get a million, just, a just, million emails on just keep at it. bugs. <laughs> I mean, it, people breaking things like that is also a testament to how easy these systems are probably to understand, right? Because once you understand the systems and you understand how they play together, you go, huh, I wonder if, mm, and, yeah. then, and then and then you break something and you're like, uh -huh. how much freedom do I really have? <laughs> yeah. Too much I mean, is the answer. <laughs> yeah. A lot of that really started with these abilities. Uh, when I, I think I added those in either November or December, basically abilities are tied to items, right? So you get a certain item and it has an ability attached to it. You drop that item and then you lose that ability, things like that. Mm. Um, so when I added those, there was a number of really great bugs that came out with that. There was one where you could completely cancel fall damage by just using an ability midair. So you could do huge skips through the world by just jumping down everything and then using an ability right before you landed. There was the dash thing, like I talked about, where you just clip through walls really easily. <laughs> and I mean, Good Lord. People people do some awesome stuff, and I, I love watching it. <laughs> uh, this is going to break us, Stephen, I feel, when this comes out. 
Uh, it just, I, look, it just, it just looks it's so one of those things that I'm I'm so intrigued by that I want to know. I don't want to. I don't even want to look at it until I get it. You mm. know what I mean? Like I, I want to be. I just want it here. And the more I'm going to obsess about it, the more upset I'm going to be that I'm. It's not in my hands right now. <laughs> that's just. That's just how I'm going to be. I, I know it. I I know it for a fact. Like most of the stuff that I kickstart, I'm like, it's gone. I'm putting it away. It, I'm pretending it's never going to happen again. It was just a charitable donation. I'll write it off <laughs> to all, all my taxes. I'll never see. And then it's like, oh, two and a half years later, we got it. What is this? I don't even remember. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's how I like to do this thing because <laughs> like when, when, I mean, you know how we get when, when the big guys tease something, we're like, we obsess over it until it comes out and then it's delayed and then this and then that. Just let the thing happen. Like that's yep. that's the the approach I take to this. But yes, it's it's one of those games that I'm gonna like. I I could tell because I'm a huge. I'm not really a rogue person. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm not big into into the rogue elements, but like it seems like you're doing it the the way that I do appreciate it. Where it's not, you know, you're you're only losing your uh, the flair. You're not losing the foundation. Right. Yeah, um, I don't want it to be frustrating at all. And the rogue really gives you a lot more playability, right? right. I don't want it to be a, a two hour game you finish and you're done. Like that's I, in my opinion, that's not as fun. I like games that I can go back to and whittle on a little bit. They get an update, new some new content, I can go back and whittle on it a little bit more. Sure. Like that. So yeah, that's definitely the approach I'm taking where you can always come back to it and there should be something new to whittle on and find something. So how big is this world we're playing through? It's pretty big. Of- um i'm trying to think of a good comparison in size um you know it's not as big as breath of the wild i'll tell you that <laughs> that game is huge <laughs> um geez i'm trying to think of a good comparable size the, what the does thing this, is it's what does this, uh, dense, like, uh-huh. like with all the stuff you can do mm. it's not very open and like it's not a traditional open world where it's just empty and there's nothing to do like there's tons of things to find and go and discover distractions it. is what i'm hearing exactly when yeah when you say that yeah mm. exactly like the and witcher so there's, syndrome there's that there's, overworld there's a game pretty, here <laughs> it's pretty big and then you have all the dungeons that are going to be there as well so if you count the dungeons and the overworld i i can't think of a good size comparison i would say it's comfortable enough that you can finish a run right now you can finish a run in about 20 minutes because mm. there's no dungeons just running mm. end to end in the world 20 minutes if you're speed running, maybe 10. So it's big enough, 10 minutes it takes you to run end to end without crazy items or anything. So Okay. Yeah. 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 So so I mean, when when you say like let's talk about what your what your goals are as far as what you want a player to do from opening credits to end credits of of a run in this game. Um what's your target for this? Is your target that somebody could sit down in a night and complete you know, a run with a character or a couple of characters? Is this something that you want people to be playing for, you know, a Dark Soulsian amount of time? Like, what, what's your goal here for that? Yeah, so it's kind of hmm, in between those, I would say. Okay. Um, it, I want it to be something you can pick up and just play casually, right? Like, okay, I'm just going to do a run and just say, that's it. Like, that's how I play probably Binding of Isaac is the closest comparison. Or Risk of Rain 2 is another comparison I get a lot from this game. Go play a couple runs, you're done for the day. But I also want it to be, okay, I want to go upgrade that shop and I'm going to grind and I'm going to do as many runs as I can to get that upgrade all the way maxed out. So it, I want it to be, you can totally just do it casually and then you can also go and say, I want 100% this one part and just sit there and do runs and runs and runs. And yeah. Nice. I'm, I'm aiming for both of those. When uh, when does PvP get tossed into the mix? PvP? <laughs> <laughs> So there's no multiplayer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll see what happens say, when this Kickstarter keeps going. Uh-huh. You're gonna you're say, gonna have to figure some shit out. Yeah, for multiplayer, I would say that's gonna be a sequel or a mm. DLC way down the line or something like that. Okay, um, but but that has crossed your mind at some point. Release. Yeah. It, it, oh, I get asked about it all the time because people will immediately make that connection. Like Risk of Rain Two is probably the biggest one. Mm-hmm. People are like I want to play this co-op and. Go kill shit, you know. <laughs> yeah, like this is great, but can I kill my friends? Yeah, as yeah. well. That's that's what I really want from this. Yeah, game. so I mean, a lot of the systems are there, but the problem is the way the game is structured with the roguelite aspects it would require mm. a lot of reworks 
to make mm-hmm. something like that happen mm-hmm. or a separate game mode entirely. So mm-hmm. it's, mm-hmm. it's not completely out of the question, but I would say don't expect it for early access, well, especially don't expect it for early access. And I would say probably don't expect it for full release. Mm-hmm. Of course. Um, probably a sequel if we do a sequel or a later DLC down the line would be reasonable expectations mm-hmm. if, if it happens. So you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> Are you- Publisher keeps saying, don't tell anyone anything. <laughs> no, I mean, like, well, I gotta give them that little bit of hope. I mean, it's right? gotta be, it's gotta be predicated on the game's success and, and, you know, exactly. the and support. Multiplayer that- games, yeah. you have a lot more expense with like servers and things sure. like that. Like, mm-hmm. There's a whole nother beast there. Yeah, from absolutely. So. Eh, beast schmeast. Beast schmeast. <laughs> Easy for you to say. <laughs> <laughs> Easy for you to say, Andy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Th- this game, uh, it had a lot of a lot of people excited in our in our little in our little Discord in our in our family. We we're like, yeah, we gotta reach out immediately. Um, and and it, supposedly you're like leaving forever. Uh, and we we barely well, not not forever. We we got you we got you just in time apparently. <laughs> Before- yeah, no, I'm not leaving forever. I'm just moving to Japan, which is about as far away from where I live as you can get. Yeah. <laughs> what are you running from, Sean? Yeah. What am I running from? <laughs> what am I running to is the better question. <laughs> yeah, I can't talk too much about the work I'll be doing over there. It's actually mm. classified. Classified what? information. Yeah. Oh my so it's, goodness. It's oh boy. Classified engineering work over there. So you're doing classified shit and you're gonna make this game. Yeah. Simultaneously. I know I'm actually insane, right? Too many secrets. <laughs> A little bit. Too many secrets. A little bit. Too many secrets. But again, you're right, you're in Japan, you know the home a lot of great a lot of great so, Dark Souls stuff. How, so. how how long before the FBI is asking us questions? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you were the last uh, public appearance. Uh, uh, we'll see. You might get a call, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what do you know about Japan? I, uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, I played Ghost of Tsushima this year. It was good. Um, they make video games. Uh, Nintendo. Look, Sony. look for the guy in the Squirtle hat. That's what, that's, what that's what you got to do. Yeah. In Japan, oh they'll, have a, they'll have a blast. Yeah. They'll have a so blast yeah. doing that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be the only one there with a squirtle hat. I would imagine. <laughs> I would imagine so. Um, Do so, you speak the language, Sean? I'm just curious if you. No, speak. I want to learn it though. There's actually mm-hmm. going to be some classes I can take on over. Oh there. hell yeah! That's so neat. That That's sure. so neat. Yeah. Hell yeah! And who knows? Maybe you'll meet some people that are going to help you with the game too. Yeah. You never know. Yeah, for sure. That would be awesome. You never know. So, yeah, we'll see how development looks when I'm over there. It looks like it should be still nights and weekends like it currently is. Mm-hmm. Um, but of course, moving to a new country, you never know exactly what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. So, so to, to wrap up this part of the conversation, do you want to talk a little bit about what you're um, looking to get out of Kickstarter? What, what <coughs> excuse me, I got a little tickle. What you're looking to, um, what goals you, you're really hoping to reach? Uh, maybe there's some stuff that you haven't told anybody about, like some stretch goals. What, what are you trying to get out of Kickstarter right now? Yeah, so there's some awesome stretch goals that... Actually, they'll probably be revealed by the time this comes out. Mm -hmm. So I can tell you guys. Um, Consoles, PlayStation, Xbox, all that. Those Mm -hmm. are going to be stretch goals. Um, I can't remember if we settled on... I think 40K is the stretch goal for PlayStation. Um, And then Xbox, I think it's 50K. So, yeah, realistically, we're expecting to land in the 30 to 40K range is where we're going to end. Okay. Um, all of our data that we have behind the scenes on the dashboard and everything shows that's where we should expect to land, um, which is good. So we're happy with that. And in terms of where the money is going, if you guys are wondering about that, it's primarily going towards um, my sound designer, my music guy, and then we're going to have a couple more 3D artists helping out with NPCs, enemies, and bosses, things like that. Yeah, I, I was curious because, you know, it's now nowadays you are seeing um kickstarted games that also have publishers um mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know if i know of any kickstarted games that had a publisher before going to kickstarter um i'm sure it exists i just off the top of my head i, I can't remember so like mm-hmm. how does a conversation with, with your publisher go where you know obviously a publisher is putting up some money for this they're they're you know publishing the game but um how do you say hey uh, you know we need more money and and do they just go hey go you know, do a Kickstarter? Like, how does that? So actually the Kickstarter has been almost 50, 50 me. Well, I would almost say 75% them doing stuff on the Kickstarter. Okay. Oh, mm-hmm. nice. So okay. Heavily, heavily involved in it. So they helped with the, I mean, Dennis made the trailer. 
completely. Okay. So I just gave him all the tools to make it, and he went and made it. Nice. Um, so they did the trailer. They did a lot of the page. I went through and revised some of that. Uh, they did a lot of the art assets and things for that. They recorded all right. the gifts, all that. So it's almost yeah. like they're looking for investors in in like this little project exactly. or whatever that they have that yeah. yeah that, and I mean in their portfolio. Kickstarter is almost as much um, funding as it is publicity, right? I mean, just yeah. getting more eyes on the game as well. Yeah. So that was a big reason for it too. But yeah, the 30K was chosen because that's what we think we're going to need for external artists paying my sound effects guy, my composer, all that. Mm. So primarily that. I'm not going to see any of the money, honestly. <laughs> no, I'm, but, but that's, that's expected. But it, it, so. it, you you make up the money in time, right? Like the stuff that exactly. you would you would be doing. Time is money. Everybody knows that. And if that yep. time is going to go to somebody else, and you could focus on, you know, the the game systems and getting content exactly. complete now. Yeah, yeah that, up that, until that about things. two months ago, everything blender me all the time. Yeah, <laughs> it was a lot of work, and yeah. having other people helping out, just a little little bit of help that. Dennis and uh, my concept artist who's also helping with the 3D modeling work. Uh, Paul is his name. Uh, just those two have helped out so much already just doing some of that. So getting more animators and 3D modelers is a huge, a huge help to me. Because <laughs> the game game code I'm totally on board with because software designer, software developer mm-hmm. background, all that. Right. So Andy, yep. any uh, final questions for before we move uh, on to our next segment? Final parting thoughts. Uh, you know, when you see a game like this, I'm just drawn to like, listen, I have to throw some money at this thing. And I did before this. Thank you. Very much. I I have now (laughs) since gone back as of right now and changed my pledge to Mm. something slightly higher. Oh. And I think at some point, Stephen, we have to discuss what our item will look like in this game. Oh, okay. Uh, Yeah. So we're on that level right now. Perfect. All right. Very now, I have, I have, I have sent Sean a uh, image of my dick saber for reference. Just oh, for boy. references. It's just, just, just for reference. Just to see what we're capable of. That's all it is. It's just it is beautiful. All right. I love it. <laughs> As it should be. As yes. it should and be. I, and oh, I think with funny. that, I think with that, we should go right into rapid right fire. into rapid fire. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well. Ladies and gentlemen, this is where we're going to really get to know Sean here. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh. So everybody just brace yourselves. Um, we're going to start with some softball questions here. Mm-hmm. Some mm-hmm. easy, easy peasy questions. All Are you right. looking for short responses or long responses? Whatever. Whatever. I mean, right. shorter the, the, the shorter mm-hmm. your, your responses, the more questions we could ask you. Right. All right. right. Sounds good. Is cereal and milk a soup? Mm. Ooh, that's a good one. No. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> That's fair. Mm. That's fair. Okay. What kind of milk do you put in your cereal? I'm an almond milk guy. I'm actually mm. like those oh. Mm. oh, see, see? we learned oh, things here. Go. See, <laughs> I was like, I, I'll take a bet here. I'm not going to get a dull answer from this guy. I have a sense of it. Uh-huh. He did not disappoint you. Uh-huh. <laughs> Good. I mm. aim to not disappoint. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Um, what is the one dairy product that you just go, eh, fuck it. And ice cream. I, yeah. Mm. Yep. You know, it's always ice cream. It's always it's ice cream. Pain, for me, yeah. it's for me, it's like those high creamy cheeses. Like I'm not lactose oh, intolerant, yeah. but I definitely have like some stomach, some GI issues when I have yes. too much of Every something. Time I eat cheese, but man, it is worth it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Cheese is so good. Yeah. Mm. Would you rather lose all of your hair mm. or gain 50% more hair? I'm not telling you where it's gonna go. Oh, okay. But there'll be an increase. (laughs) There'll be an increase. (laughs) Well, I am slightly balding. Okay. Why I have the hat? So So losing it all is probably more realistic than gaining fifty percent more. So you'll take you'll you'll take that. You can shave off the rest. You know. Yeah. You'll you'll, you'll just gain it. That's a good point. You know what? Yeah, I'll take the fifty percent more. I can shave. I I just shave a lot. I'm a hairy dude. I won't lie. So. (laughs) Congratulations! All your hair is growing out of the palms of your hands now. Yeah. Oh, that's you did the it. worst one. You did it. <laughs> <laughs> and the soles of your feet. Disgusting. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Good Lord. Okay. That sounds really hard to shave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the wrinkles in your hand. I just want more. <laughs> <laughs> You're just going to have to nair it. You're just going to have to put your hand in some nair and just wait Ooh, and just, mm, just the wipe it off. The Ugh. The Ugh. Tearing, the the tearing, the At least mm. you'll have some calluses. <laughs> you know, you'll mm. be able to do things. True. I do play guitar, so I do have a There you go. There you go. All right. So you play guitar. Yeah, by play guitar, I mean like 
six months. <laughs> you're, you're, you're in a group of people. You're in a group of people, right? Next question. You're in a group of people. The, the, the guitar is right there. What song are you playing first? Waterwall. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> nice. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I, I'm pretty We're shy when it comes to the disappointment to now. Playing. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> I'm shy when it comes to playing in front of other people besides my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. So I'm not huge into playing in front of others. But if I had to pick one, mm. I really like uh, Halsey. She's got some good tracks and they're pretty yeah. easy to play on the guitar. So, all right. That's a good way to get into it. All right. What is your least favorite Legend of Zelda game? Oof. Let's see. The one that you could just be like, could this be erased from my memory? I just didn't, you know, I didn't, like, I didn't care for it at all. You guys are going to be surprised, but I've only really played three Zelda games and beaten two of them. Yeah. Oh, so, you have to, I believe you, 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 You've got to expound on this. Which are the three you so have Breath played? Of the Wild, which two technically, have you? I've actually never beaten Breath of the Wild because I never beat Ganon, even though I did like everything else besides the Korok seeds because fuck that. No, no one's doing that. No <laughs> one's doing okay. that. <laughs> <laughs> no one's doing that. So yeah, Breath of the Wild, I'll say I finished it because I did pretty much everything but Ganon. Mm -hmm. And I was like, eh, whatever. Um, Wind Waker. I played a ton of Wind Waker mm. growing up. That was the it's big a good one, one for me. And then I've played like part of Ocarina of Time, but I've never finished it. Okay. And so wow. in terms of the one that I could get rid of. Oh, I also played part of Minish Cap as a kid. But I never uh, Minish one. Cap is a good one. Minish Cap yeah, is fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a fun one. Yeah, so I don't have enough experience with all the Zelda mm. games to say which one I would hate. So pretty much mm. anyone I haven't mm. played, I guess, get out of here. Okay. I'm going to take that as Skyward Sword. Steven, your okay. turn. <laughs> Which are... them, that's probably the one I've heard the best things about. <laughs> Would you rather be able to teleport to anywhere in the world mm. or to any time in history or future? I would say any time in history or the future, just because get rich quick, man. Go buy some Bitcoin. Hell easy. yeah. <laughs> That's really That's the easy response, right? You know, you know how many games you can make, bro? Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you just keep going back in time. Now, do you age when you go back in time? That's the real question. I mean, mm -hmm. who, who knows how time works, you know? Yeah. It, it's, <laughs> it's a human construct time. There you go. <laughs> you see a spider in your house. Do like you that. A, look for a magazine and a glass? Or do you B, set your house on fire? Hmm. I punch it and then <laughs> okay, all right. just smash it with the fist <laughs> and then set the house on fire. Yeah, Punching forget. spiders. I mean, if you're punching that shit. spiders, man. <laughs> spiders are they're, the worst. they're just the creepiest creatures. Like they if, really if, are. if, if, yeah, like you couldn't have made it look just not as awful. I like, don't know, man. I still feel like roaches are way lower on the creep scale. Oh, man, it's, it's like there's like there's, there's 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 at least some bother. grace to a spider. You could find something to love in that. But a roach, the fuzzy ones, like the little teeny fuzzy ones, are cute and everything like that. With the, but with the big get, old eyes. But you get mm. those like those big ass oh, yeah. fucking legs and stuff. And you're like, what are you doing? Get anything out of here. from Australia. No, Daddy long no, legs. Yeah, that's that's, that's just no another way, planet. Yeah. That's just another planet. <laughs> Um, speaking of other planets, <laughs> would you rather travel to a faraway galaxy or mm. the deepest, darkest parts of the uncharted oceans on Earth? And now, remember, this is science fiction. Mm -hmm. You can do it. There's mm -hmm. no. It's not going to kill you. You're not, mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about getting crushed by the ocean. You can mm -hmm. go there. You could shine light. You could breathe and you could see what's mm -hmm. there. Or you could go to like the Andromeda galaxy or something. Mm -hmm. Or through a black hole. Yeah, that's that's a good one because like if you go deep, like really deep in the ocean, there's some weird stuff down there that looks more alien than what you might even find out. In Hell yeah! <laughs> so I might go for that actually, because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, if you're going out way out in space, I mean this gonna take a long ass time to get there and back, and it's mm -hmm. like uh, maybe I don't want this to be a long trip, so I'm gonna go down mm -hmm. in the ocean. <laughs> I think you actually answered my next question, and that is, Ooh. would you rather be a half centaur? Or a half merman, but it's their top half. That's the animal. Top half. What is top half <laughs> merman? Like? So it's like your your <laughs> fish top half is a fish. Oh, and you have human <laughs> legs, and you have like a horse top and 
people. Well, those like. books are really useless. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. They made a whole cartoon out of the horse head. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. You know what? If I could just be real life Bojack Horseman, that's not so right. bad, right? Yeah. Okay. So I, I guess I'll take right. that one. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Either one, you have opposable thumbs or anything, so you're just kind of screwed in general, right? right? Mm, that's <laughs> true. true. That is true. <laughs> What exotic animal would you like to have for a pet? Mm. Ooh. Oh, geez. You know, are gorillas exotic? Because I freaking love gorillas. And they will also mm. f- destroy your whole they entire will, self. Yeah. But yeah. They yeah. You. Absolutely. They will that's, fuck that's you up. Rip the but limbs from the body. Worth it. <laughs> if I could befriend, if I could befriend a gorilla, like if it was like oh, yeah, Coco yeah. the gorilla and there was no shot mm. that I would be in any danger... Like that would be an awesome friend to have. Just yeah. just be like, yo. Return the yeah. monkey, man. All right there, Jane Goodall. <laughs> <laughs> Who is your favorite cartoon character? Oh, I was a SpongeBob kid. Oh, that's nice. Nice. SpongeBob. SpongeBob is dope. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's good. What's your favorite SpongeBob video game? Mm. Ooh. Um, I liked Battle for Bikini Bottom, but actually the SpongeBob movie video game I thought was better. I oh, that. okay. I didn't. I, I didn't like that it didn't have an overworld, but I think the missions in that were so much better, and the driving, like the Krabby Patty driving sequences, were awesome. <laughs> that was like a dream for me as a kid. Like, I, I was not expecting sandwich. an answer for mm-hmm. that question. <laughs> the kid, the like kid, the, the kid has like a, the deep. kid's making a, a Zelda, uh, you know, in, inspired game. Who's played three Zeldas, but he, he could whip out those SpongeBob games. Like <laughs> two SpongeBob games. I also have one on my Game Boy. So technically, I played as many SpongeBob games as I have Zelda. Has a Game <laughs> has Boy, a but hasn't played the first Legend of Zelda. Well, it was or game Link's game. Awakening, at least. Yeah, I didn't play. Well, that's okay, true. so I played some of Link's Awakening on my Switch. I think I'm gonna. That's fair. Retract that's fair. my pledge and buy you a bunch of Zelda games and just put them in the mail. <laughs> Sell you a Zelda care package. I, I, I don't think go. you're gonna have any difficulty finding those. In Japan, yeah, no, it should be true. fine. It's very, very true. On your top secret find, like, government mission, and over there. hell yeah, awesome. go for it. <laughs> yeah. What are your thoughts on cranberries? You know, I don't think I've ever just eaten a cranberry by itself before. <laughs> okay, I've never eaten, eaten a crazy like, cranberry jelly. I've had cranberry <laughs> whatever, but never just eaten a cranberry, so I don't really know. Mm. <laughs> what, what is what is the deepest water? That you would stand in before you go, uh oh. Stand in? Yeah. Well, I'm I'm like six foot three, so I could probably stand in like six foot one, and I'd be good, right? I but don't like, know. I'd panic as soon as as soon as it hits my nips. I'm panicking. So, <laughs> you know, it's I a little, it's a little like, premature. <laughs> I could probably do like eight feet. That would probably be the deepest I would stand in. Okay. With nothing. Yeah, I'm not mm. a huge depth person in the water. Like I don't mm-hmm. like swimming in deep water sure mm-hmm. even though i said go to the bottom of the ocean i know that contract, yeah but you, right? you can do it no problem fear, fear is gone <laughs> right. when you do that right. yeah yeah would you rather have the power of flight or invisibility I think flight would be a lot more convenient mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i think a six foot three thing flying around mm-hmm. yeah. is the sight to behold <laughs> <laughs> So if I like slam into something, do I actually just like die? Probably. <laughs> Probably. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, you could just fly. That's all it is. Yeah. All you can oh, do okay. is fly. But, you know, in the same vein, though, we could also ask you uh, super speed mm. or super strength. Mm. Like super speed, I'd definitely just die if I ran into something. I mean, <laughs> everything seems slower to you. Like, think about right. how the Flash movie is. Like, everything's in slow motion, but you're just kind of okay. like boom, 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 using the speed the force. Speed the speed strength. force. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think I would choose speed. I think that's mm. you see, I like convenience. I like to get things quickly, sure, get to places quick, sure. Yeah, mm. Mm. fascinating. All right, well, I like this next one. Would you rather have one real get out of jail free card or a key that opens any door or a vault or a lockbox or a locker? I was going to say the key does both, right? You just unlock it and walk out of jail. So, <laughs> what's those like fancy, like, you know, super intense glass door jails? Like oh, okay. ha- right. Hannibal Lecter jail. That's the jail oh, you're in. No. I still think I'd take the key. <laughs> Hell yeah. I still think I'd take the key. Hell yeah. Hmm. yeah. So, you're wearing a Squirtle hat. I got the yeah. Bulbasaur hat. What yeah. are your thoughts on Charizard? Or why, Charmander? Is, why is Charmander a bitch? Is my. <laughs> 
<laughs> I never was a huge like. Of course, I played Fire Red as a kid. That was my first Pokemon game. And like, you're gonna pick Charizard because he's the one on the cartridge, and you see him. But then I was like, this guy's not special. I have Pidgeot. Why do I need a stupid wing attack and all this crap? So then I went Blastoise. I'm like, fuck yeah, dude. This guy has cannons. Like, what more do you need in life? The legit <laughs> tank. The legit tank. Yeah, exactly. Have you ever read the um, Pokedex en- entry for Charmander? No. So the whole thing is that if the flame goes out on its tail, oh, it yeah, dies. I remember that from the show. <laughs> yeah. So, so rain is uh, <laughs> spit, <laughs> spit uh, rain, a strong gust, just a light yeah. mist. Yeah. Yeah. yeah a, exactly. You know, uh, a really strong fart could take out <laughs> yeah. a, a, a blanket. You can just smother well, like it. In the show, Charizard and like Charmander were kind of an asshole to Ash, right? So I never really liked him that much from that Yeah, either, so. he leveled up I don't too know quickly. Why not so popular. I guess it's just a good design. But. Yeah, it's it's a good design, but he's a dragon that's not a dragon type, which really yeah. just bothers the shit out of me. Yeah, but, exactly. you know. So I'll whatever. take Dragonite over Charizard. Hell yeah, Dragonite's dope. Oh, that's Dragonite's actually, he looks like a jerk out. He looks like a jackass. Like, right. you're like, you look at the first two and you're like, yeah, this that is going to be a cool dragon. You're like, what is this? He looks like Puff the Magic Dragon. He's What's that obese happening? and, but he's got dragon claw. Hi, hi guys, it's me. I'm a dragon. I'm like, geez. All right. Well, I, I was expecting Sean to be like, I never played a Pokemon before ever. No, no. no and it's, I got this hat out of a bin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this one was a gift, so I didn't buy it. Type of thing. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> Andy. Oh, let's see now. Hmm. Hmm. I've yet to ask you, Sean. Mm. Uh, the pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Hell no. <laughs> no, this is. I'm that's not a, a big yeah, I mean, a, I mean, a, in general, a, a lot of hell knows on this one. Lately. Emphatic, yeah, yeah it's, it's emphatic. Yeah. yeah, I'm not. Mm. I'm not a pineapple person in general. Mm. I mean, I'll oh, eat, yeah, yeah. but definitely not on pizza. That's not for me. Mm. Mm. Okay. All right. So everybody has, uh, you know, wallet, keys, phone, the three things that they put in their pockets <clears throat> when they're leaving the house. What's the fourth thing? Watch. Apple Watch. All right. Yeah. Apple Watch. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. But you know what? I'm counting that as phone. Okay. Let's That's do something. Let's pick something else. <laughs> I got to look around. What do I got? Pants. Got to make sure you leave the house with pants. Usually a hat, uh, to be fair. Usually a hat. A hat. Okay. So, All right. That's probably what you're looking for. <laughs> for an answer. Mm. That's fair. It's a fair answer. Hmm. What word best describes you? When you've been drinking too much, like let's say when your oh, Kickstarter campaign is like, when you hit a hundred, when you hit one hundred and twenty-five k, right? You're like, let's go, and it's like you're in Japan. It's like you've had too much sake. One sake night, for everyone, you know what I mean? And you're spilling all those government secrets. That's yeah, right. yeah. So that doesn't happen at, at the conveyor uh, belt sushi <laughs> bar. <laughs> what what's the what word comes to mind when loud. you've had too much to drink, Sean? That's what I'm told. Loud, <laughs> like good, good, loud, not bad, loud. Like, mm, okay, see that's a different good loud, loud. Yeah. boisterous. Okay, the there is loud. a clear distinction. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. There's like okay. Becca loud, and then there's yeah. like <laughs> Life of the Party loud. Yeah, exactly. You know, second one. Yeah. Gilbert Gottfried loud. People purposely trying to get me drunk when I'm in groups because they like me when I'm drunk. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Um, <laughs> what right, do you I'm, like, Sean, when he's drunk? Get him drunk because I can't. Uh, take, yeah, I can't. Th- I can't think sober, Sean. Hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm, I, this is going to be my final question. Then, Andy, I want you to hit us up with the uh, the final, final question. Okay, the final, <clears throat> final. Oh All God. right. So, your significant other or wh- whomever, your best friend, doesn't matter who, gets a phone call. Mm. You have been arrested. What were you arrested for? Ooh, that's a good one. Uh, let's see. How can I not incriminate myself for my government job? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's say, geez, I was going to say money laundering, but I don't want the tax man on here. So yeah, <laughs> I, I, I stole a loaf of bread to give to the homeless person go. down yeah, the exactly. block. Let's go with I was, that one. I was being a <laughs> good Samaritan and I, I gotta sure. go with a safe answer here. Sure. <laughs> I don't know who's listening. <laughs> I no, robbed the no hedge funds and no one no lied one. to you. <laughs> this isn't actually a podcast. This is just a Zoom. No, podcast. yeah, no, it's this is an actual. Stuff. It's an interview process. Like yes, and congratulations. And we you did not get the job. Oh. <laughs> 
Congrats, you're terrible. All right. Oh, damn. <laughs> your, your laptop will now self-destruct. <laughs> your doors are locked. Don't try to escape. Uh, all right, Andy, hit, hit us up with our final question of wanna, the evening. Can we Can we do this again, but with Sean drunk? I'm curious what that's going to be like. Uh, <laughs> depends what his tech is like in, in Japan. I hear they got good mm-hmm. internet. Uh, why not? Oh, yeah. From what I heard, they got really good internet. You know, with, with, the, with the time zone difference... It could be like early morning for us, and it's like we could be sitting there with the coffee. He could be sitting there with the sake. It would be great, right? Yeah. Hell yeah, right, right. Just plastered if, if that's what you right. want, man. I mean, that's what <laughs> <laughs> all right, they Andy. Are, they are big drinkers over there, from what I understand. Mm-hmm. They are, just they, have they your like their, uh, they like their drinks. <laughs> just have your hibiki whiskey and just yeah, <laughs> stuff like that. Your Suntory. All right, all right, Andy, Sean. Let's do it. This is the final question of the evening. We're so sad to see you go because you've been an amazing guest, but all good Thank things must come to an end, unfortunately. And this is where the show ends. And it ends on a very special, albeit awkward moment in the final question. Mm-hmm. As I address the camera directly, directly. So you can see my beautiful eyes and look directly into my soul. This is the last question. It's a simple choice. It is a binary choice. It is a one and or the other, as it were. And that is Andy or Steven. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's a brutal question. We man. need like a super cut of just the reaction of like these fucking assholes. <laughs> yeah, <that's- laughs> Just cut out I like you make it as awful. As, okay, let me just cut out on the zoom button here to cut cancel out, and just, leave. Uh, oh, <laughs> cover like my name over leave. Okay, and I just say the name and click it and buy it. Well, the obvious <laughs> answer is, and then it cuts out. <laughs> did, did he? Just, oh man! <laughs> did he just Sopranos us? I think so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, did. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, if I got to answer, oh, I'm gonna have to go with Steven for the hat, man. I mean, Boom. hat buddies. Let's go. Oh, it. Only for the <laughs> hat. Oh, not only he All said. Right. That was one reason. Mm. That was one mm. reason. It wasn't the only reason. He didn't Hold say on. only because of the hat. That wasn't Hold what on. came out of his mouth, Andy. Stop I, putting words I, in his mouth. Okay? I, 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 I couldn't hear him over me clicking the edit your pledge button. So give me a minute. Let me just. I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't get that answer clearly out of Sean's mouth. So if you want to restate that. Mm. Well, I mean, you got a pretty sick blue shell shirt, so <laughs> he does. He does. No, no, no. no. Listen, but so actually, the blue shell. you you've broken a very long winning streak for me, Sean. So it's about oh, to happen please. eventually. Oh, so please. you know, please. after like five or six in a row, it got kind of dull. So please. thank you for okay, thank you, you for go. that. Oh, thank you for th- thank you for giving Steven some self confidence back because I'm pretty <laughs> sure. As if there's any <laughs> other kind of confidence. Uh, all right folks that, that's going to bring us to the end of the show if you want to follow us on social media we are at dual underscore screens on twitter at dual screens on instagram i am at batchild 27 andy is at pants guy and our facebook group is facebook.com slash groups slash ds podcast you can follow us on twitch at twitch.tv slash dual screen streams or you can follow me on twitch twitch.tv slash bat child sean where could everybody find you where could everybody find the game where could everybody find everything yeah, so everything is linked on the website on holomento.com. Super easy to find. So first thing you type when you type holomento, you're going to find the Steam page and the website. Super easy. Awesome. And then maybe Twitter, go to at holomento game. Super easy. Subreddit, just holomento. We got it all. Discord, we don't have a custom URL yet. So you'll have to grab that from one of the others, but it's linked everywhere else. So you can find it there. Awesome. Well, good luck with everything because uh we're early on as we said when we were recording but when this comes out you're going to be right in the thick of it so we hope that you are going to blow past your goal and hit oh, yeah. hit the hell out of some stretch goals uh we're looking so, forward yeah. to that and we're looking forward to being a part of it uh full disclosure yes andy and i are both backing this game mm-hmm. um so deal with it uh but when we like something we like something and then we want to talk do. about that something really and do. become friends with the person making that something so you could suck it yes. all right <laughs> <laughs> folks if you want to support us you can do so on patreon.com slash nds podcast where you will get this episode about five days before it goes live so before everyone else hears it you can hear it first folks again that's um patreon.com slash nds podcast just like our patreon producers there's three of them now vegas girl on fire Colton, the apprentice Nestler and FNH Paul. We can't continue to grow without all of your support. And we love you so much for doing it again. If you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the thumbs up. Please hit the subscribe button. The push to a thousand continues. Andy, is there anything you want to tell our listeners before we go? Uh, 
I love you all. I love this game and I want it now. Indeed. So. Indeed. That's going to bring us to the end. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, listeners. Thank you, viewers. And as always, please be excellent to each other.